how's it going? My name is Jay and welcome to the channel. Today we're back here in Sanikov land in Planet Zoo. For those of you who are new here, Sanikov land is my current project in Planet Zoo. We're working on creating this really large modern zoo in this lovely lush tropical environment featuring animals from all the different continents. If that sounds good to you, please do consider hitting the subscribe button for more of this series and more Planet Zoo in general. And of course, like today's video if you did like today's video. With that out of the way, let's get into what we're doing today. Today we're going to be introducing our cheetahs to our African section, which we've started working on as of the past couple episodes. We have recently just added our African wild dogs and of course built up the burrow in the previous episode, which was our big section kind of dedicated to animals on the African savannah, which do enjoy burrowing like the warthog, the aardvark, and of course our little exhibit animals like the African goliath frog and a couple others which I can't remember right now. Anyways, today we're introducing the cheetah which of course is the fastest land animal on the planet and an absolutely adorable big cat which we're going to be introducing to this relatively long habitat. It's not very wide one but it is very very long which I did intentionally of course to give the cheetahs lots of running space because they are obviously so fast and they do enjoy running and we're going to be talking a lot about their their speed and what they enjoy in terms of enrichment in this episode because we are kind of creating a bit of a custom enrichment item for them which of course doesn't work within the game but you know in our headspace it kind of like we just kind of use our imaginations a little bit but I thought it was pretty cool and that's going to be kind of the central focus of this habitat because otherwise it is a relatively plain one, not you know over the top, not like overly detailed like the burrow was. So it is going to be a much simpler habitat today but I think it still looks pretty good and it's still kind of an interesting one nonetheless. Now you'll have seen me just dig out the basic pit for the habitat because it is going to be a slightly sunken one and now you're going to see me create the fence and the kind of wall where the guests will be viewing the animals from, which is this little platform. And um, it's a relatively simple one, you'll see me do this technique various times throughout Sanikov land. Uh, if you want a really in-depth look at how I do this sort of fencing, do check out some of the earlier videos. Probably episode 2 or 3 is when I started doing this sort of um, kind of moat style, almost, well, almost like a moat or just generally a sunken habitat wall. I do this a lot, it does look pretty good and I think it really helps uh, with the realism of the park, I think. And of course the fence on top is just a very simple custom fence. Use the stick pieces and the bamboo pieces with a little bit of rope and it came up pretty nice. The colours are quite drab but that was somewhat intentional just because I wanted there to be somewhat of a relatively uh, coordinated colour scheme across various sections of the park. For example, if you go back to the South American section, a lot of it is a very nice kind of pale green color. If you go over to the petting zoo it's more like reds and grays and here I want for the um, sorry for the South Asian section there was a lot of orange, there was a lot of green, very bright vibrant colors and for this African section because a lot of it is going to be savannah themed I want some slightly more drab colors with like occasionally pops of like bright yellows and you know stuff like that so as you go along you're going to see a sort of a color theme slot building up of course I don't like plan these out in advance, they kind of just come to me as we go along. And of course Sanikov land as a whole does have a bit of a colour theme to it as well which is this um, very specific orange colour, a very nice pale green and uh, this kind of warm grey as well. You will have seen that all over Sanikov land and um, you will actually see it in this video as we just kind of pan around you'll see it uh, here and there. And I think it's a very nice colour scheme. It brings some vibrancy to the park because of course sometimes it's very easy to get lost in the monotony. In a lot of my previous parks that was one of my big mistakes is I end up getting way too monotonous in terms of colour and in terms of like building style. As in Santa Claus land I think it's really fun to explore new ideas, bring in some really vibrant colours, explore different styles in different, uh, different areas of the park. And of course with the savannah area you will have noticed that we are trying out some new styles a lot of wooden buildings, a lot of very circular buildings um, and you'll see more of that today in fact as we build the cheetah habitat. And right now we're really quite at the, um, the early stages of the cheetah habitat where we're mainly putting down rock work. So let's get into today's species profile while we're doing that. Now for those of you who are new here, I know you do have quite a few new subscribers, 
Um, the species profiles are things we do every um, every episode of Sanukov Land that features an animal. Where we learn a little bit more about that animal together, we get a little species profile up, learn about their behaviors, their you know biology a little bit. It's pretty cool, and I, I think it's a lot of fun because at the end of the day, in Planet Zoo, the animals are the centerpiece. They are the main part of this whole experience, and it's fun to learn about them a little bit. So I'll get today's species profile up on screen now. So today we're of course going to be talking about the cheetah which is Asinonyx jubatus, scientifically speaking. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right at all, but I'm just going to go with it. So Asinonyx jubatus, um, they are vulnerable at the moment in terms of the IUCN status, which means their population is decreasing, not uh, super rapidly and not dangerously yet. It is decreasing and uh, there are efforts being made to kind of maintain the population and bring it back up. But just so you know, it is decreasing, unfortunately but there are efforts in place to stop that. Their size, they're pretty small for a big cat, 65 kilograms about, and about 1.5 meters long. Of course, you imagine they'd be quite least, quite uh, light-footed, very, you know, very light animals because they need to be aerodynamic and just fast because that is their whole thing. They are built for speed. Um, they live in, of course, the, uh, savanna and scrub regions. They need these wide open spaces so they can just bolt and just catch their prey. They live about 12 years or so, which is very much the average lifespan for a lot of cats, ranging from domestic all the way to big cats. They kind of live between the 10 and 20 year range. Their diet comprises you know, almost entirely of small and medium sized mammals with a few birds and other animals here and there. But basically, they hunt fast moving animals, gazelles, antelopes, that sort of thing, even smaller rodents and stuff like that. Now. Moving on, let's talk about some few uh, so a few interesting facts about the cheetahs. So, like I said, fastest land animal on the planet. They get up to well, the most uh, kind of um, accurate measurement we've got so far is about 100 kilometers an hour. But there have been reports of them getting up to about 128 kilometers an hour, which is insane. Um, they are unable to roar, which is very cute actually. They make other sounds like chirps and um, chirps, which are, uh, you know, unlike all the other big cats, these guys can't actually roar, which is really cute. Uh, speaking of their appearance, their spot pattern is super unique. It's like a fingerprint. Every individual has its own spot pattern, and you can actually tell individual cheetahs apart by uh, their, uh, their coat. And let's talk about the behavior, because this is, I think, Personally, the most interesting part about them, they're very shy, docile uh, animals. Uh, in fact, they kind of really work quite well with humans, which is kind of interesting. You know, back in ancient Egypt and stuff like that, they were actually tamed down quite regularly as companion animals. And um, they are very, like I said, very shy, very anxious animals. So in zoos, they can actually get really stressed out because of the... Um, you know, because they might have uh, not enough space that, as much as they used to, and of course, they're not used to humans. But one really, really cool thing, and this is going to be, I think this is still one of the absolute most, like, wholesome and cute things I've ever heard, is that cheetahs in captivity are often given partner dogs. So basically, they get a, a trained Labrador or a Golden Retriever, and they pair them up with a cheetah, so that, like, the cheetah would essentially have a companion dog. And the dog essentially kind of shows the cheetah how to socialize, kind of gets them to loosen up a bit and be a bit less stressed, and provides a sense of security for the cheetahs as well, which is so cute. Like, honestly, if you have the time, go search on YouTube for cheetahs and dogs. It is the cutest thing ever. Speaking of their stress in captivity, let's go back on the screen and uh, well, I'll show you this little custom enrichment item that we're building today which is a zip line. So, in captivity, cheetahs of course don't get to hunt animals, but they still get stressed because they cannot express their behavior. So here, what I've done is I've created a bit of a, like, a obviously it doesn't work within the game, but in our imaginations it does. So I took these two rotation feeding poles, put them on opposite ends of each other, and strung a rope between them. Then I created this little false mechanism here with a little wheel and some ropes to essentially create a zip line. So, I imagine how this would work is you get a big chunk of meat or a carcass and hang it up from one side, and then when the cheetahs are ready to hunt for it, 
you pull the string or a mechanism would release and the meat would go zipping from one end to the other so the cheetahs would have to like chase after it and jump after it and it just I think it would be so good for them. I know there are um, zoo fish do similar things like this. In fact uh, a couple of episodes ago someone suggested in the comments um, to do something like this for the wild dogs because I believe a zoo does do it for the wild dogs. I think Oregon Zoo maybe? I can't remember which one it was. But I, I just thought it was a very cool little addition here. Makes the habitat a little bit more unique and I think, I don't know, it's just a very nice thing to be, you know, to imagine them doing. Of course it doesn't work within the game but we have our imaginations, of course. <laughs> Anyway, so let me know what you think of that. What do you think it's like a viable thing? I know zoo, some zoos do it, but of course mine it looks a little bit different. So let me know if you think that would work or if there's anything I should do to change it a little bit. Uh, comments down below, of course. Now, moving forward in today's episode, we are going to be building a little shelter for the cheetahs. Very much uh, stylized in the same way a lot of our buildings within this African section have been. A lot of wood, uh, a little bit of glass, and it's going to be circular, just like the past two buildings. I know they're starting to get a bit samey, so after this we are going to start switching things up a little bit, creating some more unique structures and, um, you know, basically just uh, making things look a little bit more interesting because of course I don't want uh, everything to look exactly the same even within a similar section. So here we're just building the sides of course, and you will have seen me do this technique a lot to make circular buildings and domes. Uh, if you want to have a really in-depth tutorial on how to do this, I would suggest checking out uh, Paul Lee does some really good tutorials on this sort of stuff. He did a whole tutorial just on circular, how to build circles basically in Planet Zoo. Do check that out. Um, the lead designer does good dome tutorials as well. Really love both your channels. Honestly, really great Planet Zoo YouTubers. Uh, if you're watching my channel, you almost definitely have been watching theirs as well. But in case you haven't, do check them out. Amazing channels. Really, really good Planet Zoo content. Um, so yeah. Anyways, we put in that base structure and then of course we rotate it. I left the section, uh, middle section blank because I wanted to introduce some glass there. Now I'm just creating a couple of entrances for the uh, cheetahs themselves. And you may have noticed I put in a little platform on the inside as well, just a kind of ring shaped platform. That's just so the cheetahs have a little bit to climb on and sleep on. They do use it, not very often though in the game. Um, I thought they wouldn't because I didn't think they could access it at first, but they can and they do sleep on it. I do fill up the entire um, middle of the shelter with bedding of course so the cheetahs have somewhat soft to sleep on. And that pole in the middle gets replaced with a scratching pole. So it looks like it's both a support item and an enrichment item which I thought was pretty nice to see. I like really incorporating enrichment items within a shelter builds. That's something I did a lot in the petting zoo section of Sanokov land. Like I would put the uh, scratching pads right up against the walls, you know, I'd make some of the support poles actually be scratching poles. I think it's a nice way to make enrichment items feel more, you know, in um, just more integrated with the habitat as a whole. So you just see me add in a few little steps so the cheetahs can get up here. They do use them again, not very often but they do. The cheetahs that we'll be adding are going to be two males, which are in my head canon of others, because uh, cheetahs in the wild are quite different than other big cats in the sense that they have um, social groups that consist of more males than females. So for example in a lion pride there's usually just one male or a few, maybe relatively fewer males than there are females, but cheetahs there generally are more males. In fact the last time I was at a zoo where I saw cheetahs was Singapore Zoo and they had two males which were brothers so kind of emulating that kind of vibe here. But the only unfortunate thing being we're not going to get cheetah babies and the cheetah babies are so ridiculously cute. So I might cave and eventually add a female just so we can get the babies. They are just the best. They're so cute. I think cheetahs are really really cool animals. I remember when I was a kid I used to think they were overrated because everyone was like oh yeah cheetahs, coolest animal on the planet. But they are so cool honestly like not just for their behavior and their speed but they just look so interesting and because they have the very 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 unique body plan. It's like every inch of them is so perf perfectly like built for speed like they're still aerodynamic like it, it's really cool and if you look at them up close and you really compare them to other big cats you can see the differences are just huge like compare it to the, the bulk of a tiger you know like or the the climbing ability of a jaguar they're just so different 
even though they're all kind of similar in that same way. And I think that's just really, really cool. So, um, yeah, the cheetahs are just pretty cool. One cool thing I wish the game would introduce is a, a variant to get king cheetahs. So if you don't know, king cheetahs are a very specific uh, mutation of the cheetah genome which allows for this really beautiful coat pattern where instead of the small spots, you get these big dark splotches with black stripes right down the back and uh, slightly more fur at the back as well. It's honestly such a beautiful uh, variant of the cheetah coat and uh, I can understand why they didn't include it because it is a very very rare coat. It doesn't appear very often at all in the wild. In fact, it's um, I think it's only ever been recorded like a few times. So I can understand why they didn't include it, but it would still be cool to see, I think. Very very uh, interesting there. Here you can see me adding in the foliage, of course. Again, using lots of the marula trees as bushes. I think they work so well as um, a slightly drier looking bush. Um, I try to add in slightly a bit more um, greenery here because of course we need to remember that we are building in a tropical zoo. And uh, I use a few elephant grass plants and a couple of custard apples here that you'll see later. Just to, you know, get a bit more of that saturated green colour to, you know, um, accent the habitat because it is a lot of uh, very drab, kind of sap green at the moment with the marula trees. And um, one thing I might do in the future is I might make this habitat a bit bigger. I think it just get a little bit small for the two cheetahs. So if I do, uh, you'll see it off screen and you'll, you won't see it off screen. You won't see it until the next episode. But that's just uh, in case it changes. I don't want you guys to be like, oh my god, it changed. What happened? It'll just be because I thought it was a little bit small. I didn't know a lot of dead trees and logs here because I, I wanted the cheetahs to have kind of like these kind of like obstacles to walk around on. Um, just so, you know, they have a little bit more interest in there. They're not, uh, cheetahs don't really enjoy climbing. They don't climb very much at all. Uh, in the African savannah, the ones that do climb are the leopards, which I'm very surprised we didn't end up getting in Planet Zoo, actually. Leopards are pretty dope. I don't know why we didn't get them, but, you know, we might eventually get them. And we have the jaguar, which is quite similar, but different. <laughs> I've seen a leopard in the wild once um, when I was in Sri Lanka. That was pretty cool. There, it was up in a tree and it was a long way away in the nature reserve. I suppose if it's in a nature reserve, is it really still in the wild? I guess kind of. Whatever. Anyways, this is a cheetah episode, not a leopard episode. We'll talk about leopards in the future if we ever get them. Uh, I've not seen a cheetah in the wild. That would be very cool. I've, I've not been to the African savannah at all. That would be really cool. My parents have been to, um, I think it was Kruger National Park, something like that. Uh, one day, maybe. That would be a very cool trip to go on, I think. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys would be, you know, if that's something you guys would love to do one day as well. Like, I feel like that's a bucket list kind of thing, and if, you know, let me know if, like, the savannah is on your bucket list, you know? It'd be pretty cool. I used to have this joke with my dad that if you go to the savannah, you'll see more documentary crews than anyone, because, like, uh, I had this joke going because, like, er there's been so many documentaries made of this Serengeti. It's crazy. It's just, it's just a little funny thing. Anyways, on screen, we, you'll just have seen me make a very simple staff area, a little uh, staff habitat. I mean, <laughs> not a staff habitat. Staffs don't live in a st The staff do not live in the habitats. I assure you, we're not putting staff in the habitats. This is a regular staff building. <laughs> it's a very simple one, of course. Just uh, this connects up both the uh, cheetah habitat and, of course, the uh, aardvark habitat for the burrow. Very, very simple, nothing too special here. Just so, you know, it looks like there's more behind the scenes stuff. And as I mentioned before, I don't really do any work on the interiors of the staff buildings because they are staff, staff buildings. I'll do interiors for guest buildings, but not really any of the staff ones because honestly, that would take forever. And um, we don't actually have that much left in this episode. That went by pretty quick. I do hope you guys have enjoyed that. I hope you guys have learned a little bit about the cheetahs. I know this isn't the most interesting habitat build. It's still, uh, in my opinion, still quite a fun one. I still really enjoyed it, but of course not as like over the top or really heavily detailed as our last one. But nonetheless, I still think it's pretty fun and I, I enjoyed it. So I do hope you guys did as well. Now we're pretty much coming to the end of the episode. There's only a couple things left to do. Gonna add a little bit more foliage, a little bit more rock work and uh, finish up the canopies which are going to be above the guest areas. Very simple canopies that you're going to see. 
they are you know very similar to what we've been doing in the rest of Sanakov land so if you want to see a more detail on how I build the canopies do check out some of the earlier episodes I did a lot of canopies for the uh, South Asian section so for the Gariels, for the Tigers um, in fact even for the um, South American section I did a lot of those canopies we didn't do much in them for the petting zoo of course but the petting zoo was a very different style from the rest of the zoo because it's meant to be an older section so you know that's understandable. Um, yeah, so with that, that's pretty much it for this episode. If you want to say a couple more things, I want to say thank you so much for the uh, feedback on the last episode and the uh, the support because we have had so many views in the last video, which was just so nice to see because I did really work quite hard on it on the burrow and it was so nice to see that people were enjoying it. So thank you so much for that. And thank you for leaving all the comments as well because uh, Without, you know, like you guys, I always ask you guys you know, what animals you want to see next. And one of you did suggest the cheetahs, which I thought, yes, let's do it. So that's exactly why we have cheetahs today. And, you know, if you guys want to see more, uh, a specific animal, do definitely put it down in the comments. Last week, I did get some requests again for um, more ungulates like zebras and wildebeest and stuff like that. So we will probably do those in the future. I'm thinking we'll do that in a specifically a large safari habitat much later on in the series. And uh, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Right now, we are coming very close to the end. And I just want to quick note that uh, right now, of course, we are working in the African section. But I'm starting to feel like we might get a DLC sometime soon. I know I've said that before and I was definitely very wrong. We still haven't got a DLC. But, you know, it's coming up on August, so it's been uh, more than three months now since the last one, so I'm thinking we might get something, fingers crossed. I don't know if we will. We probably won't, to be honest, knowing my luck, but um, if we do, we'll work on something for whatever DLC that is, and if we don't, of course, we'll just continue working on the African section. So either way, we have plenty of stuff to work on. Anyways, with that out of the way, I just want to say again, huge thank you to everyone for watching this video, for watching the last video. Thanks for all your support, really really love hearing from you guys so do leave a comment down below. Like today's video if you did like today's video and of course subscribe for more Planet Zoo, more Sanakov Land and more similar content. With all that out of the way I just want to say yeah thank you again <laughs> like I said a million times and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!